Well, hello, everybody, from Billings, Montana. Women's college basketball on a Thursday night. And how about a top 15 showdown between the hometown Yellow Jackets, ranked 11th in the nation, and the number 13th ranked Western Washington University Vikings. It's the second meeting of the season between these two who are, who are battling really for the conference championship. Western Washington won the earlier matchup not long ago. That was an eight point game over in Washington. So this now the rematch, but the Yellow Jackets do have a one game advantage in the conference standings over Western Washington. The Vikings have been swept by Alaska Anchorage. Yellow Jackets only loss, of course, coming at Western. So they are just about set to tip this one off as we get underway here on a Thursday night. College basketball action in Billings, Montana. And the tip, opening tip off won by Western Washington and we are underway. Western into this with a 20 and 4 record this season, 13 and 2 in conference play. Yellow Jackets 22 and 4, 13 and 1 in the conference. On the heels of five straight wins, Vikings have won four in a row. They'll take the first shot of the game, and it's an air ball. Much to the delight of the whiteout crowd tonight over there in the student section. Several men's basketball players here watching and supporting the Lady Jackets. The men's team also on top of the conference standings right now. So here we go, Nelson, Courtney Nelson driving. Short jump shot, good. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Yellow Jackets will retreat on defense. Another jump shot, that one hits rim but off the mark and here come the Yellow Jackets on the run. Nelson. Penetrating with the left hand. No good, gets her own rebound and she'll back it out. Shayla Montague, one of her favorite shots. She's a three point shot. Artist for the Yellow Jackets and we go the other way. Just over a minute 15 gone by here to start this game. Stephanie Peterson with it. Now Aspen Giese defending. Wild shot in the paint, doesn't go. Nearly rebounded and then it is Mason Oberg, one of the best three point shooters in the conference at 42% on the season. Hits that one for the Vikings lead. Now the Yellow Jackets will reset. Again, Yellow Jackets have won five straight. They're far from playing their best basketball a season. Still roll in with a 13 and one conference mark. Exactly eight minutes to play here in the opening quarter. Clean game so far, no fouls on either team. Inbound to Bad Bear, now back to Nelson who loses it inside but deflected. Off of Oberg and it'll stay with MSU Billings. 
Now the long inbound, catch and shoot. There were only three seconds left on the shot clock. That hit rim for Deani Boyce and the Yellow Jackets regained the rebound. Fresh shot clock possession for MSUB. Now Boyce driving to the lane in traffic and off the glass. Once again, Giese defending on Mason Oberg. Yellow Jackets in white, Vikings in the blues. High arcing three, misses everything, but tossed right to Brooke Walling, who kicks it back outside, and here's another one, nothing but the bottom of the net for Oberg, and they'll want to defend her outside. Again, she's shooting 42% on the season, three-point range. Riley Dykstra's even better for the Vikings at 45% on the season. Here comes Boyce again. Whistle, first whistle of the uh, basketball game, and she'll go to the free throw line. That fouls on Aspen Garrison. 6'3", junior from Bellingham. As you look at both these rosters, Kevin Wooden now in his 20th season of coaching at MSU Billings, loaded with Montana players. He's got a couple from Washington on the roster. Natalie Andreas and Chloe Williams. On the flip side, Western Washington's loaded with Washington players. One, though, from Missoula, Montana. Freshman CC size out of Missoula Sentinel. So here we go, tied at six. Under seven minutes left here in the opening quarter. Yellow Jacket fans chanting defense and they get it. Riley Dykstra dribbles it off her leg. And the Yellow Jackets will inbound with just over six and a half left here in the opening quarter. Nelson up on top. Now Deani Boyce with it. Cola Bad Bear posting up inside, and if they can get her the ball down low, look out. Vikings are well aware of how dangerous Cola Bad Bear can be. Dykstra with it now. Looked inside, nobody there. Screen set up top. Around it, now into traffic and out. Shot clock winding down, we're at five seconds now. Mason Oberg with it, she's already got a couple of three-pointers tonight. They call a shot clock violation. Yellow Jackets with outstanding defense. Forcing a second straight turnover on back-to-back -back possessions. So Boyce will inbound to Courtney Nelson, and here we go. Tied at six. Nearly half the opening frame gone by. Screen set by Deani Boyce. Nelson to Aspen Giese. High arcing three just off the front rim. Back we go the other way. Dykstra with it now. Battling down low is Brooke Walling for position. Chloe Williams defending now. Outside three from Dykstra, off the rim. Rebound to Nelson. And the Jackets will run with it. Williams with it. Chloe subbing in, giving Cole a bad bear a quick breather. Nelson. Backs her way down. Here comes Deani Boyce to the basket. High off the glass and a whistle. And that'll take us to the media timeout. 4.46 to play here in the opening quarter. We're tied at six between two top 15 teams in the nation.
And welcome back to a fantastic night of college basketball. MSU Billings ranked 11th in the nation. Western Washington, the number 13 ranked team in the nation. Top two teams in the GNAC. Battling for what could turn out to be the conference championship this regular season. Officials over at the scorer's table here for a moment before we get back into action. So they've reviewed the three-point shot from Western Washington that was originally ruled a shot clock violation. They say she got the shot off in time, so the basket's good. They add three points to the scoreboard for the Vikings. And Deani Boyce off to a hot start for the Yellow Jackets. She's got six of their eight points, four of them from the free throw line. Fantastic crowd at Shorty's house tonight here at Altero. It's gymnasium. And why not with this caliber of basketball? Winner of this game could ultimately wind up hosting a regional tournament. Knifing her way to the basket. In and out, though, no good was Stephanie Peterson. Danny's on now into the ball game, handling the ball out front. Down low to Nelson. Likes her matchup. Blocked. And will go the other way with it. Vikings will run. Here comes Peterson. Bounces inside to Brooke Walling. Wallings, the leading scorer for Western Washington, averaging 17 a game. They get it to her, some help defense. Deani Boyce hit the ground there, and they whistle a travel. It'll be another forced turnover for the Yellow Jackets. So good defense for MSUB. Final in that first meeting was 76 to 68. Over in Washington, Carmen Dolfo now in her 33rd season in charge of the Vikings. Head assistant Stacy Terrell has been with her for 12 years. That one bounced inside and not touched. Turnover for the Yellow Jackets, so we'll take it the other way with Western. Inbound to Peterson and here she comes. Under three and a half to play here in the opening quarter. Clean game so far. Two team fouls on Western Washington, none against the Yellow Jackets. Dribbling outside, then penetrating is Oberg, and she's whistled for the offensive foul. I'll tell you what, Courtney Nelson loves to draw the charge. She led the team and was among conference leaders last year in drawn charges, and she's at it again this season. Not afraid to hit the deck. Danny Zahn across midcourt for the Yellow Jackets, who trail by one at home. Now it's Boyce dumping it inside. Bad Bear flips it out. Boyce penetrates to Nelson. 10 on the shot clock. Nelson, short range jumper, saved by Bad Bear. And out of bounds to the Vikings. Great effort there from Cola Bad Bear. She'll be the leading scorer right now for MSUB on this season after joining the Yellow Jackets for her final season from Montana State University over in Bozeman where she played some terrific ball for the Bobcats. Penetrating inside and well defended by Boyce. Dykstra with it down low, fade away. Off the rim, rebound Williams. And the Jackets will run, Williams quickly to Montague. They'll slow it down. Under two and a half to play here in the opening quarter. Jackets work it around the horn. Cole is trying to post up down low and it's a battle between her and Riley Dykstra. Five on the shot clock, Boyce knifing to the basket, no good. Here comes Stephanie Peterson. Western Washington nursing a one point lead in the dark uniforms. 
in that first meeting of the season, Western jumped out to a giant lead in that opening quarter. That was a big difference maker in that one. Now the Jackets forcing a tough offensive possession. Blocked by Bad Bear. She is stunned by that call. Shot clock was down inside five seconds. And Jaden Watts will go to the free throw line. Minute 37 left here in the opening quarter. First foul on Cola Bad Bear. First team foul on the Yellow Jackets. And she gets them both. Lead back to three for the Vikings as Brooke Walling subs back in. Aspen Giese back out on the court for the Yellow Jackets, and here we go. Courtney Nelson in as well. Bad Bear inside to Deonte Boyce. Fade away, hard off the back rim. Here comes Giese, sails in for the rebound. Montague from just inside the three-point line. That's in and out. Giese nearly with another rebound. Instead, it's Peterson the other way, ahead to Olivia Wickstrom. Whistle, the fans wanted a travel call. Instead, it'll be a foul against the Yellow Jackets with 107 left here in the opening quarter. Inbound for the Vikings, all the way back out. Dykstra with it, pump fake, dribble. Kicks it outside, Stephanie Peterson, high arcing three, got it. And now a six point lead, the largest of the night for Western Washington. Forty-five seconds to play, jump shot, off the mark for MSUB, and here comes Peterson. Tipped away by Bad Bear. Yellow Jackets, about a three second differential between the game clock and the shot clock and that one's tipped away from Courtney Nelson. Vikings can play for the final shot of the period should they choose. Instead it's deflected, rebounded, and put back up and in by Maddie Grandboys. So a big sequence there. Under five seconds to play now here in the opening quarter. Yellow Jackets can score the last points if that turnaround is good from Boyce, which it is not. So here we go after one. Western Washington has doubled up the Yellow Jackets at Alterowitz Gymnasium. 16 to eight as we head to the second quarter. And welcome back as we head to the second quarter in a top 15 matchup between MSU Billings and Western Washington. Mason Oberg, the game's leading scorer with nine points, all three of them from outside the arc. And that's not a surprise as the Yellow Jackets turn it over. Oberg shooting 42% on the season from three. She is three for three tonight. Underneath Brooke Walling looked like she'd freed up for a moment. 
Now Walling with it again. Defended by Cola Bad Bear. Walling, reverse won't go. Danny's on, will bring the Jackets back up court. Natalie Andreas into the game. That was her dishing to Danny Zahn for a deep three. Andreas with position and a foul called. Foul going to go against Mason Oberg. And that's her second of the game. That's a big foul. Two with 9.17 left here before halftime. So Oberg sits down. Andreas drives baseline. Tried to bounce it to Bad Bear and it was stolen away. Dykstra with it. Riley Dykstra looks inside. That one's tipped away. Aspen Garrison gets it in. Andreas hits the deck and the foul is going to be called on Natalie Andreas. So each team with a foul apiece here in the second quarter. Minute gone by. Dykstra up top. Good battle going on down low between Bad Bear and Aspen Garrison. They're going to call three seconds on Garrison. One too many pivots, so a turnover. Another one forced tonight by the Yellow Jackets. All right, a mild press here. Danny Zahn handles it with ease. Let's see if the Yellow Jackets try to work that inside game some more. They've missed some outside jump shots. This game once tied at six. There's one. Andreas with a fadeaway. That'll snap the Yellow Jacket drought. They've been outscored 10 to 2 up to that point. Brooke Walling with it up top. Now the near side to Wickstrom, penetrating, double teamed, in trouble. Gets it to Walling. It's nearly stolen away and another whistle. Foul called on Shayla Montague. That'll be her first of the night as the inbound goes to Walling. Oh, nice bounce pass inside. Vikings had an open shot. That's going to be a foul called on Cola Bad Bear. She got her. Uh, they're going to call it offensive. An offensive foul. Seven fifty to play here before halftime at Alterowitz Gymnasium, number eleven MSU Billings in white uniforms against number 13 in the nation, Western Washington. Western won the first one by eight over in Washington. Yellow Jackets hold a one game lead in the conference over Western at the moment. Pass inside to Cola Bad Bear and they call her for the offensive foul. So two on Cola now as she comes to the bench. Maddie Grandboys back into the lineup for Western Washington. Here comes Demi Dykstra. Looks inside to Riley Dykstra. Good battle going on down low between Walling and uh, Deani Boyce. Walling has to toss it back outside. Boyce just all over. A blanket defense for Deani. Stripped away. Courtney Nelson now with it. Great defense, Deani Boyce. Yellow Jackets trying to cut into the lead yet again. Vikings have yet to score here in the period. Baskets good from three. Courtney Nelson. So an eight point deficit trimmed now to just three for the Yellow Jackets with 6.40 and counting left in the first half. Really ratcheting up the defense. 
crowd calling for it. And there's Boyce on Walling again. Boyce, tough defense, forces Walling into a fade. Rattles in and out. Players hit the deck, a couple of yellow jackets. And that's called out of bounds on Riley Dykstra. Another great possession defensively for MSUB. Andreas with a terrific job. She'll sub out, here comes Chloe Williams. Also back into the game, Stephanie Peterson for the Vikings. So since Mason Oberg's gone to the bench for Western Washington, and she's their leading scorer tonight with nine on three of three, three-point shooting. Since she's gone to the bench with two fouls, Western's not scored. Yellow Jackets back on the attack. Nelson driving, spins, had a basket. Instead kicks it outside for the three. I don't think she realized how open she was on that spin move. She'd lost the defender. Now the long ball. Wickstrom is good from outside. Lead back to six now as we approach the five and a half minute mark before halftime. Shayla Montague. Nelson with pressure. And Peterson safely across midcourt. Wickstrom fires another three. That one's in and out. Rebound to Giese, and here come the Jackets. Montague posting up inside. Instead, it's Williams. Nelson with the outside three off target. Under five minutes to play before halftime. Vikings have led the majority of this game. Yellow Jackets held the brief 2-0 lead, and the Vikings add to it. Spinning inside is Brooke Walling. So Western's lead now back to eight, its largest of the night. That one's stolen away from Boyce. Williams gets back nicely on defense. And a travel call. Excellent job from Chloe Williams to force the travel there. And that takes us to the media timeout. We've got a good one between two top 15 teams. Western Washington, 21-13 over the Yellow Jackets with 4.16 to play before halftime. And we're back out of the media timeout inside Alterowitz Gymnasium with the Yellow Jackets trailing by eight, really struggling to score. Just four of 20 tonight. Just four of 20 shooting for the Yellow Jackets and one of eight three-point shooting. Meantime, the Vikings have five threes tonight. Five of eight shooting almost 63% from outside the arc. Danny Zahn drives to the basket. Vikings trying to build on the eight point lead. Stephanie Peterson curling to the basket, layup's good. And a 10 point lead now for Western Washington with under four minutes to play in the opening half. And over the back call there, looks like it'll go against Olivia Wickstrom. Mm -hmm. 
Don't expect the Yellow Jackets to panic by any stretch. They've been in this spot before, and especially recently, on the heels of five straight wins, but again, yet far from playing their ba uh, best basketball. Nelson thought about the three. Jackets earlier this season trailed by as many as 17 here at home as Andreas spins inside, freshly inserted to the lineup. Jackets trailed by as many as 17 in a game earlier this season, rallied back to win by almost 20. Their defense has been terrific tonight as they force another turnover. Wow. Now the officials will disagree. The one under the basket trying to keep it here, but the other two say no way. Yellow Jackets now just 5 of 22 shooting, but still within 8 points. So excellent defensively. They've just got to find something on the offensive side. Bad Bear trying to post up now. Has the ball, spins, nice fake, soft touch, rattles out. Under three minutes to play now before halftime. Peterson knifing to the basket, nice dish, well defended. The Vikings will have to kick it back outside. Not afraid to take the three, but off the mark was Wickstrom. Whistle blows. Be a jump ball and possession will stay here. Inbound to Dykstra who fires, misses everything. Sometimes those tight, short, easy ones are the toughest to hit. Hard off the back rim, nearly dropped, but off target for Olivia Wickstrom. She's come out firing threes tonight. Possession will stay here with the Vikings. 2.29 left here in the opening half. Quick inbound. Walling defended well. Kicks it back out to Dykstra. Now Weston will set up in the half court offense. Outside, three, bottom of the net for Stephanie Peterson. So now the largest lead of the night at nine for Western Washington. As the clock winds down to two minutes left here in the first half. Quick three in and out for Boyce. Vikings doing a nice job defensively of limiting offensive rebounds for the Yellow Jackets. Quick drive to the baskets, good as Peterson lays it in for a 13 point lead. Yellow Jackets work it back around. Ideally the goal to get this back to single digits before the break, there's a quick push on the outside. It will just be the third team foul of this quarter though for Western Washington, so not a shooting foul. Shayla Montague and Chloe Williams back into the game as Cola Bad Bear and Natalie Andreas sit down. Minute 23 left here. Jackets go directly inside. Deani Boyce and a foul called there. Looks like it'll be on Ellie Brockman. No. Stephanie Peterson. Brockman not in the game. I saw the number two, but I didn't see the one in front of it. First foul tonight for Stephanie Peterson. Deani Boyce will go to the free throw line where she sort of made a living tonight for the Jackets. Deani's their leading scorer with seven. Five of those coming at the free throw line with a chance for number six here on the way. Peterson now leads Western with 10 points. Mason Oberg with nine. And it's impressive that uh, Western's done this damage and held the Jackets at bay. In fact, increased their lead with Oberg on the bench, who sat with over nine minutes to play after she picked up her second foul here in the second quarter. Stop here for the Jackets to be huge before halftime. 
Battle down low. They cannot force it inside. 10 now on the shot clock. There's the inside pass. Shayla Montague defending. They're forced to go back outside with it. Tough move to the basket. Rebound. Had a foul on the floor. Called against the Yellow Jackets. So it'll be on Aspen Giese. Not a shooting foul. 49.9 uh, left here in the opening half. Now they'll lob it inside. A little too tall for Brooke Walling and the Yellow Jackets take over. About 11 second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. And that one's poked away from Deonte Boyce. Stolen right back by Walling. And now just about a one second differential. So the Vikings look like they'll attempt to play for the final shot of the half. Stephanie Peterson out front with the basketball. Brooke Walling sets a screen. Peterson, easy layup. Screen works to perfection. Might have shot it too early though as the Yellow Jackets had about five seconds left on the clock. Nelson launches at the buzzer, off target. And Western Washington will take a 13 point lead into halftime. More critically, they hold the Yellow Jackets to just 17 points here in the first half. When we come back, we'll play the second half between a pair of top 15 teams in the nation. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back to Altero. It's Gymnasium on a Thursday night. NCAA 2. Division 2 women's basketball. Between a pair of top 15 teams in the nation. 13th ranked Western Washington with the lead right now. 30-17 to 17 over number 11 MSU Billings on the Yellow Jackets home court. I can't recall the last time the Yellow Jackets were held to just 17 points in the half, but here they are. That said, they've trailed by as many as 17 already this season in the opening half and come back to win by nearly 20. Now that'll be tough to do against the nationally ranked Western Washington team, but big story in this one, the Yellow Jackets shooting just five of 25 in that opening half. Stephanie Peterson, the game's leading scorer with 12 points. Mason Oberg with nine, and that really, all of them came in the first quarter on threes. Deani Boyce leads the Yellow Jackets with eight. Courtney Nelson has five. Yellow Jackets take the inbound, and here we go. We're underway in the second half. They've played terrific defense. Again, they just need to find the bottom of the net. Cola Bad Bear battling down low. Defended by Brooke Walling. Giese drives to the basket. Out to Montague. That shot's off target. It'll be a jump ball. And your possession arrow goes the other way. Stephanie Peterson now brings it across midcourt for the Vikings. Up by 13. That's the largest lead of the night. Last Yellow Jacket lead was 4-3. to three. Early on in this one. That one tipped away, and I believe off the foot of Brooke Walling, and it is. So as the Yellow Jackets bring it up court, I mentioned they've been playing terrific defense. They forced now 12 turnovers on the night. Boys to the basket. They said she was shoved. The foul is going to be called on Aspen Garrison. Rebounding tonight has been controlled by the Vikings. They've got 22 to 13 for the Yellow Jackets. And again, 14 of those defensive rebounds. So really keeping the Yellow Jackets off that offensive glass. Pair of free throws down for the Jackets, and here we go. A minute gone by here in the third quarter on a Thursday night in Billings, Montana. Good basketball at Shorty's house. That one nearly thrown away. Walling using her size to corral it and score. There's the inside attempt. Pull a bad bear with the left hand. And if the Jackets can get that working, look out. Double team help on the inside. Stolen away. 13th turnover tonight forced by the Yellow Jackets. Now they need another offensive possession. A quality offensive possession here. Points on the board. This time it's Boyce battling down low. Giese with a pump fake. Jump shot. Now Peterson ahead to Mason Oberg, who sat out again the majority of the second quarter. She picked up her second foul. With a little over nine minutes to play before halftime. Long three off target from Peterson. Nearly stolen away by Dykstra. Instead, cross court three. No. Off target for Boyce. Here comes Riley Dykstra. Fans wanted a tr double dribble. They thought she touched it with both hands and three officials missed it, but maybe not. Lead back to 13 now. Two and a half gone by here in the third quarter. Boyce battling down low, and I'll tell you what, Western Washington brings good size to the basketball court. They are tough to defend and tough to score on down low. And she stepped on the line, did Mason Oberg. So another turnover for the Vikings. 14 now tonight. 
Yellow Jackets just haven't been able to cash in on it. A lot of basketball left to be played here. Under seven minutes left here in the third. Nelson walks it across half court. Boyce, looked like she was hooked down low. Baskets up, good, and the foul. Three-point opportunity for Deani Boyce, who's having a terrific night. She's got the majority of the offense for MSUB. Jackets have 24 points. Deani Boyce has 15 of those. So the 13-point deficit cut now to just 10. And the Yellow Jackets get it to single digits. Plenty of time. Quick whistle on the floor there against Shayla Montague, they say, on a push. Cola Bear, Bear uh, Bad Bear subbing back into the game. Montague will take a seat, her second foul. Inbounded to Stephanie Peterson. She gets it up top. Riley Dykstra with it now. As they try to look inside to Walling. He kicks it back out to Peterson. Has an open lane. Doesn't take advantage. That ball's blocked by Aspen. Giese. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> you can hear the fan reaction. Oberg hit the deck and she was bailed out on the foul call. Two team fouls apiece. That one's blocked by Nelson and the Yellow Jackets come away with it. They'll run, Chloe Williams. Sets it up now. Boyce inside. Had Bad Bear with a great save. Boy, Bad Bear could have dunked that home had she been able to corral it. Williams, lefty layup, good. And the deficit's back to just single digits for the Yellow Jackets. Mason Oberg now. Inside, Brooke Walling, turn around, in and out. Rebounded though by the Vikings. Peterson outside, off glass. Boyce comes away with it. And the Jackets will bring it back up court. A 13 point lead now down to eight. Williams, Boyce, who's had the hot offensive hand, is slapped away by Walling. Dykstra hands to Walling and they go back out top to Oberg. Now Dykstra. Trying to get it inside to Brooke Walling. Cola Bad Bear, nice job of defensive. Oh, and then she sneaks by and an easy layup now for Walling. A defensive assignment missed there. One of the very few tonight by the Yellow Jackets. Under five minutes to play here. In this third quarter at Alterowitz Gymnasium. Plenty of time for this Yellow Jacket team that's so potent offensively. Bad Bear outside, Williams underneath to a wide open Courtney Nelson. Oh, Nelson nearly steals it away. Good heads up play there by Courtney. Oberg with it now, in traffic, throws it past midcourt, that should be a turnover. And it is, over and back. And that'll take us to the media timeout. Yellow Jackets cutting into a 13 point deficit, back to within eight. With under five minutes to play here in the third.
Welcome back on a great night for college basketball. A couple of top 15 teams in the nation head to head here tonight. Top two teams in the great Northwest Athletic Conference. MSU Billings, 13 and one. Only loss to this Western Washington Vikings team in Washington. Vikings are right behind him at 13 and two. Cola Bad Bear, tough. Reverse layup, spins it off the glass. Yellow Jackets now within six. It's the closest they've been in some time. Offense has come alive. They're shooting 50% in the third quarter after shooting just five of 25 in the first half. Whistle off, blown there. Charge to Chloe Williams. That's her first foul. Third team foul for the Yellow Jackets in this third quarter. Vikings with two team fouls. They get it inside to Walling, who backs in. Great job by Bad Bear, but it deflected out by Walling. Keeps it alive for the Vikings. Oh my goodness. Fans trying to talk the Vikings into an early shot and it looked like they were almost in desperation mode before Cola Bad Bear was whistled for a foul. <laughs> Terrific crowd here tonight in Billings, Montana. One of the best for the season for the Yellow Jackets and rightfully so. Two fantastic basketball teams. Under three and a half to go here in the third quarter. Nice bounce pass inside. Double team though, even better defense. Thrown up recklessly and off target was Wickstrom. Now Andreas runs with it. Leaves it for Shayla Montague. Nelson in traffic. Bounce back to Nelson. Don't leave Shayla open for that shot. Got it! <laughs> Shayla Montague. Leading three-point shooter on this Yellow Jacket team and third best in Yellow Jacket history. Lead down to just three now for the Yellow Jackets. And that looked like a carry. Stolen away nonetheless. Courtney Nelson now with the basketball and here come the Jackets across midcourt. Chance to draw to within one or maybe even tie after trailing by 13 at halftime. Inside position, Nelson. Nearly got that to go on the deck and a foul call. Hustle, hustle, hustle plays from Courtney Nelson. That'll keep the ball with the Yellow Jackets. A couple of substitutions for the Vikings as Peterson and Mason Oberg head to the bench. 2.24 left here in the third quarter. Chloe Williams, Natalie Andreas now with it. Inside, Deani Boyce fights for position and the whistle blows. Aspen Garrison looks stunned at the call. But Deani Boyce will go back to the free throw line where she's already had a big night. In comes Cola Bad Bear. First one up and good for Deani Boyce. Making a living tonight at the free throw line and she is 10 for 10 on free throws tonight. It's a one-point game between the Yellow Jackets, ranked 11th in the nation. Trailing the 13th ranked Western Washington Vikings. Here comes the student section. Tipped away by Chloe Williams. Nearly stolen. Recovered by the Vikings. Brooke Wallen with it. Outside. Great Yellow Jacket defense. They give up the three. It's nearly an air ball. Collected by... On the baseline, oh my goodness, wow. <laughs> you can hear the fan reaction yet again on that one. 
Courtney Nelson was pinned down low there, looking for any kind of breathing room, and they whistle her for the offensive foul. Just more hustle from Nelson. I'll tell you what, she's having a terrific game tonight, defensively. One point game, Vikings retain possession. Dykstra with it. Yellow Jackets just playing suffocating defense. They've only allowed six points in this third quarter. Bounce inside, now back out. And a foul with 11 seconds left on the shot clock. 120 left in the third. Fouls on Deani Boyce. Sends Olivia Wilk, uh, Wickstrom to the free throw line. Jackets have outscored them 18 to six in this third quarter. Can they keep it rolling? Wickstrom misses both. Screen set by Bad Bear Nelson. Carves her way to the basket. She'll go to the free throw line with an opportunity to give MSU Billing its, its first lead since early in the first quarter when it was four to three. Nelson with seven points tonight on the scoreboard, but you can triple that for hustle points and difference makers, diving for loose balls. Rebounding, Bad Bear takes a seat, likely for the remainder of the quarter with just 107 left. Courtney's first free throw attempt of the night is up and down. Keep in mind the Yellow Jackets only hit five field goals in the first half. Only five made shots in the first half. Trailed by 13 at the break, yet here they are tied with a minute to play in the third quarter against the number 13 team in the nation. Inside, Brooke Walling spins. Rebound, Deani Boyce. What a game this has turned into. Everything we expected and then some. Aspen Giese. Nelson again on the ground. Loses it out of bounds, just lost her footing there. And there'll be about a difference of 6.7 seconds between the shot clock and the game clock as we close out this third quarter. MSUB outscoring Western 19 to six in the quarter to rally back and tie this game. Stephanie Peterson dribbling up top. Back to Peterson. Screen set by Walling. Peterson takes advantage. Kicks it outside. Peterson with it. Under 10 on the shot clock. Double teamed under the basket. Williams with eight seconds and counting. Kicks it outside. Uh-oh. Shayla Montague just off the mark. Giese didn't realize the game clock was down to zeros yet. The Yellow Jackets with a giant third quarter of play, outscore Western Washington by 13 to tie it up. Don't go anywhere as we head to the fourth and final quarter of regulation.
And welcome back to the fourth and final quarter of regulation here at Alterowitz Gymnasium in Billings, Montana. Excellent Thursday night women's college basketball. Hometown Yellow Jackets in white with the conference lead right now at 13 and one. Western Washington right behind them at 13 and two. Yellow Jackets rebound. Cola Bad Bear hits the deck. No foul called. And Peterson will run it the other way as we're tied at 36. Again, if you're just joining us, the Yellow Jackets with only five made field goals in the first half. Yet they rally hard in the third, hold Western to just six points in the third quarter, and here we are. 10 on the shot clock. Dykstra underneath, poked out of bounds. It'll stay with the Vikings. Seven seconds to shoot. Mason Oberg set to inbound. Five seconds called against the uh, Vikings and the Yellow Jackets come up big yet again on defense. Jackets gave up 16 points in the first quarter, 14 in the second, and just six in the third. Courtney Nelson, a delicate three. No good, tipped around, rebound, walling. Yellow Jacket defense has forced 17 turnovers tonight. Their offense has only turned it over seven times. Now 10 seconds to shoot inside, turn around, in and out. Jackets chasing their first lead since the score was four to three. Bad Bear alone inside, and there it is! First lead since the early moments of this basketball game for the Yellow Jackets. And they continue the suffocating defense. Giese on Oberg up top, now Nelson defending. Bad Bear down low, says get it out of here! Two minutes gone by here in the fourth quarter. Vikings have yet to score in the frame. Now Nelson defended up top by Stephanie Peterson, probing. Oh, nice crossover, Deani Boyce flips it up. A late whistle, and Boyce will go to the free throw line. Foul whistled on Riley Dykstra. That's Dykstra's first foul of the night. First team foul on Western Washington in this final quarter. And the first miss of the night at the free throw line for Deani Boyce. She had been 10 of 10 up to that point. That one's good and the Yellow Jackets lead by three. That's their largest of the night after trailing by as many as 13 at halftime. And through midway in the third quarter, they were down by 13. Oberg with it now, nowhere to go, trying to get it inside to Walling, and they do. Flashing to the basket, a nice offensive play there as Peterson finishes. And that snaps a long drought for the Vikings, who still trail by one. Bad Bear inside, poked away and over the back on Stephanie Peterson. Won't be a shooting foul. Just the second team foul on Western Washington in this final quarter. Yellow Jackets need an inbounder here, Courtney Nelson. What play do you want us to run? Courtney was under the impression that the inbound would be on the other side of the basket. The officials discuss it from distance for a moment and decide, nope, we're on the spot. Shayla Montague, too hard, gets her own rebound. Deani Boyce. Draws another foul, and you can see the emotion now from Cola Badbear. 
Again, a non-shooting foul on the floor, but already three fouls with 7.01 to play in the fourth quarter against the Vikings. So Aspen Garrison subs out with her fourth foul. They go inside to Deani Boyce. No rush. 15 on the shot clock. Nelson stops, pops, got the layup! Another basket for Courtney Nelson tonight. She's been all over the floor. floor. Lead back to three for the Yellow Jackets. Again, it has been tough as nails tonight between these two teams. Jackets, their largest lead of the night, just three. That one's bounced as Aspen Giese swoops in to play health defense. And the 18th turnover of the night forced by MSUB. Little too tall for Cola Bad Bear on the inbound on the inside there. And they converge hard on Bad Bear. She would have been triple teamed had she made the catch. Vikings are well aware of how much damage Cola Bad Bear can do down low. They've done a nice job limiting Cola offensively tonight, just six points, but Cola. Been on the bench a little more than usual tonight. Under the weather yesterday. And overnight with a bad fever. So Cola's minutes are limited. Nice drive to the basket there for Stephanie Peterson. And a quick steal, heads up play by Oberg. Walling thought about the three. That one's poked away by Chloe Williams hustling. She hits the court. Wow. Nelson hits the court, she's on the deck. Gonna get called for the personal foul. So possession will stay with the Vikings in a one point game and 5.35 to play. Kevin Wooden wants a timeout for his Yellow Jackets. They hold a one point lead after trailing by 13 at halftime. 5.35 to play in regulation. Welcome back to Altero, it's Gymnasium where it's the Yellow Jackets, 41-40 over Western Washington. Jackets really having to work for this one, a battle tooth and nail. It's a street fight between these two teams that are on top of the conference, Yellow Jackets. With a one game lead right now over Western Washington and the one point lead in this game. Huge implications in this one for both teams. We're talking about the opportunity for regular season conference championship here. Neither can clinch mathematically tonight, but also a shot at the regional tournament and possibly hosting. Azusa Pacific certainly in the mix there. Jackets whip it around. Natalie Andreas high arcing three. 5.06 to play here in the third quarter. Aspen Giese back in along with Cola Bad Bear. As the Yellow Jackets will go back to work on defense. They have forced 18 turnovers tonight. Stephanie Peterson with it, out top, as the Vikings will set up their half court offense. Brooke Walling now, defended by Bad Bear. Walling picked up the quick step and goes to the basket, regaining the lead for Western Washington.
Now Cola desperately wants it back. She's battling inside, has it. Tips it out, Shayla Montague, corner three, in and out. And the rebound to Western. Under four and a half to play here in regulation at MSU Billings. 13 and one Yellow Jackets in conference play. 13 and two are the Vikings. 15 on the shot clock. That one's deflected away and they say kickball by Courtney Nelson. I believe that'll take us to the media timeout as both teams head to the bench. As the officials confer down at the opposite end. And we'll keep it right here. Again, Western Washington controlled the opening half. They led it 30 to 17 at break. Jackets midway through the third quarter trailed by 13 points and rallied to tie it at the end of three. Now with 4-11 left, it's a one point game. And again, the Yellow Jackets just five of 25 shooting in that first half. Scoring leaders, Stephanie Peterson leads everybody for the Vikings with 18. Mason Oberg's been stuck on nine since the first quarter. Brooke Walling has eight. Gianni Boyce, 16 for the Yellow Jackets. She's got 11 of those at the free throw line. Courtney Nelson with 10. And of course, Cola Badbear with six. Those are your scoring leaders at the moment as we jump into the final 4-11 of this game in regulation. Winner with an outstanding chance to go on to take the regular season conference championship. But again, want to make it clear, nothing can be clinched tonight. Peterson inbounds. Tossed away. Wickstrom sends it to a spot where Maddie Grandboyce wasn't able to get to it. The 19th turnover tonight forced by the Yellow Jacket defense. We're under four minutes. Bad Bear now calling for it inside. She's got position. Had it for a moment. Now they'll go to her. And those two have been battling much of the night. Walling will be called for the personal foul there. That's not a shooting foul yet. It's the fourth team foul. So from this point on, the Yellow Jackets will be shooting. MSUB saddled with one team foul in this final quarter. Now Cola wants it again. She's got position inside again. Backs down low, lefty layup is good and the foul! Wow! What a turnaround for this Yellow Jacket offense. Shot at a three point play for Cola Badbear who looks like she's doing everything she can just to stand up. Again, grinding through a bad fever last night. IVs today. And the free throw is good. Cola Badbear now with nine points on the night. And of course, she's the team's leading scorer. Been limited tonight. Western defensively has played outstanding basketball against Courtney Badbear. But the Yellow Jackets playing terrific defense as well. Officials are going to have to confer to figure out who this foul is going to be whistled on. That last one for the Vikings, of course, was on Brooke Walling. She's their leading scorer with 17 on the season. She's got three personal fouls tonight. They've now, I believe, called a technical foul for what looks like face guarding. They're explaining it to Yellow Jacket head coach Kevin Wooden. Interesting. That's one I've not seen before. Mason Oberg at the free throw line. Again, she's been stuck on nine since the first quarter. Nine points tonight. All of them three-point shots. 
rattles it home. So that's a tough call. I'm not, I'm not sure who it was on. I believe Cola Bad Bear, who's now got four up on the board. So two free throws and the ball for Western Washington. Vikings tie it up with the free throws. Now with a shot at the lead. 3.23 left here at Alterowitz Gymnasium. And here comes Stephanie Peterson. Lobs it inside. Jumper falls, so a big four point possession for Western Washington answering Cola Bad Bears three point play. 46-44, Vikings on top. Bad Bear stays in with four fouls. Nelson in the paint, spin move, layup, no. Bad Bear keeps it alive, but it's rebounded by Brooke Walling. Two point lead under three minutes to play. Back outside, Walling will launch a three. That misses everything, and the Yellow Jacket faithful. <laughs> Applauding. Now under two and a half left in regulation. Yellow Jackets ranked 11th in the nation. Vikings, number 13, inside, Bad Bear. Good defense, great help defense there by Riley Dykstra. Oh, that's a travel. Wow, Peterson just picked up the ball and walked with it. <laughs> Nelson now defended by Peterson Yellow Jackets trailing by two as we're under two minutes to play here inside Nelson had lost her defender for a moment as Peterson had fallen down now Nelson to the basket goes up top again and the foul is going to be called on Stephanie Peterson she cannot believe the sequence in the last 20 seconds. Courtney Nelson now, two free throws on the way and a chance to tie this game. Any way you slice it, a terrific comeback tonight for the Yellow Jackets. Or they've done it much of the year. Not by this wide of a margin against this caliber of a team. And here we are knotted at 46. Brooke Peterson and Courtney Nelson one-on-one -on -one right now. Oberg with it. Dangerous shooter. Already with three threes tonight. That Yellow Jacket defense, if they've needed it at all, it's right now. It's been there for them all night. That looked like a carry. No whistle. Wow. Somehow Grand Boyce gets the ball back. No carry called there. And Grand Boyce with it now. Deflected away by Nelson to the applause of the Yellow Jacket faithful. Kevin Wooden still asking about the carry. Gently encouraged to get back into the coaching box. 11 on the shot clock. A buck 13 left in the game and counting now. Brooke Peterson with it. Grand boys now inside. Defended by Bad Bear who swats it away. What a defensive effort from Cola Bad Bear playing with four fouls. We're under a minute. Tied at 46. Edge of your seat. Women's basketball tonight. Nelson. Deani Boyce, Bad Bear calling for it. Help defense has been terrific down there. Now it's just one on one for Cola. Goes to the right hand, no good. Gets her own rebound and it's ripped away by Dykstra. Seven second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. And Carmen Dolfo wants a timeout with 23 seconds left on the shot clock. 
in a tie basketball game in Billings, Montana. Vikings trying to win one on the road. Yellow Jackets trying to move a step closer to the conference championship. Thirty-one point nine seconds left here in Billings, Montana. Largest lead of the night for the Vikings. Thirteen in the third quarter. Largest lead for the Yellow Jackets, just three on multiple occasions. But at the moment, we're tied. Big difference in this one, turnovers. Twenty-one turnovers forced by the Yellow Jackets against the number 13th ranked team in the nation with the basketball and a shot at the lead. Again, about a seven second differential between game and shot clock. Oberg with it, runs into Bad Bear who hits the deck, it's a jump ball. Possession, arrow favors the Vikings. And that does not adjust the shot clock. Shot clock stays put. On a jump ball that stays with the offense. So now 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Oberg with it, spinning inside. Falls down on the baseline. Jump ball called, this possession will go to the Yellow Jackets. What another defensive effort for MSU Billings. And the Jackets will take a timeout. Alicia Breen, do we want a full, do we want to? Yeah, that's what she checks with Kevin Wood and they'll take a full timeout, the Yellow Jackets. And wow, just the defensive effort tonight from this team has been incredible, especially in the second half. Yellow Jackets holding Western Washington to just six points in the third quarter. Each team with just 10 points here in the fourth. Far lower scoring game than the last time they met. That final was about three weeks ago. 76-68. Western Washington took that one at home over the Yellow Jackets. That's MSUB's only home loss, or rather, conference loss I should say of this regular season Yellow Jackets picked in the preseason by coaches to win it all they can take a giant step forward with a win tonight if Western Washington lets this one slip away after leading by 13 on the road in the third quarter they'll be thinking about it for a while high scores tonight Stephanie Peterson with 18 Deonte Boyce with 16 for the Yellow Jackets Team fouls, critical right now. Western Washington's next foul, they've got five, so it'll be shooting from here on. Just two against the Yellow Jackets. So should the Yellow Jackets miss here, with time remaining on the clock, they could conceivably foul, not give up any kind of a fast break to the Vikings. Let's see what Kevin Wooden draws up on offense. Alicia Breen's defense has been unflappable tonight. Shayla Monaghy to the inbound. Courtney Nelson handling. Screen set by Cola Bad Bear. Boyce, long three, in and out. Rebound, Bad Bear, and it goes! The basket is good! 1.4 seconds left, and Cola Bad Bear has done it! <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> she can't even breathe. She can barely stand. Yellow Jackets have been on the losing end of a one-point loss twice this season. And the comeback they have put together in this second half will go down in history. For a team that's on the verge, 1.4 seconds away from winning not just tonight, 
but a giant step towards clinching its first regular season conference championship in over a decade. Again, the Yellow Jackets have two fouls to give. So they can foul instantly on the inbound. Officials, I believe, are checking the clock to see whether or not we'll add time. Officials still down at the monitor, trying to figure it out. Both teams huddled up. Western Washington now trailing by two with the basketball. And at the moment, 1.4 seconds. So two of them discussing it now. They'll oftentimes bring in the third official to take a look. Rotate one of them out. Cola Bad Bear with 11 points tonight. The two biggest of her Yellow Jacket career, and it's only a one season career, not even a full regular season after transferring here from Montana State. The last two points for Cola Bad Bear, gigantic for this Yellow Jacket program. So here comes the inbound from midcourt. The officials elect to put three tenths of a second back on the clock so that's plenty of time for a dribble if not two and a shot Yellow Jackets I believe will take another time out they wanted to look at the offensive set Western Washington brought to the table so they got to look at it and again don't get lost on the fact that the Yellow Jackets have two fouls to give do you foul instantly you know on the inbound do you let a second tick off the clock and then foul? Naturally, you want to be careful not to foul on a three-point shot attempt or any shot attempt for that matter. But those two fouls to give are extremely important at this point in the game. Now, there's a discussion on whether or not Cola Bad Bear can come back into the game the officials tell her no, they sit her back down on the bench. And that may be for the best anyway for the Yellow Jackets because she's sitting on four fouls. If she picks up a fifth and this goes to overtime, that'd be tough. Here we go. 1.7 left. There's the inbounds off the fingertips of Walling, and it's over! It is over! The Yellow Jacket women have won it. 48 to 46, they rally from a 13 point deficit in the third quarter <laughs> in one of the biggest wins in Kevin Wooden's tenure here, his 20 year career. Unbelievable. Huge win for the Yellow Jacket women as they move Two full games in front of the Vikings in your conference standings with three to play. Again, this win does not clinch a conference regular season championship, but if you look at them celebrate, you know they know. They're within an eyelash of winning it. The celebration at midcourt. Here come some of the men's basketball players in the student section, and why not? Climb on, everybody. Climb on. <laughs> In front of a fantastic crowd here at Alterowitz Gymnasium tonight. What a Thursday night for women's college basketball. The Yellow Jackets hold court at home and they hold serve. Leading scorers, Stephanie Peterson with 18 for the Vikings to lead everybody. Mason Oberg finishing with 11. Brooke Walling with eight. For the Yellow Jackets, Deani Boyce, 16. The majority of those at the free throw line, 11. I'll think about that for a minute. Deani Boyce hits 11 free throws tonight, 11 to 12, and the Yellow Jackets win by a basket. Courtney Nelson, all over the floor. 12 points for the Yellow Jackets. And Cola Bad Bear with 11. 
barely able to stand, barely able to breathe tonight after falling ill the last day and a half. Bad Bear, 11 points, including the game-winning basket with 1.7 seconds left. She's down on the court signing autographs right now. And the Yellow Jacket women continue to celebrate. Here comes Courtney Nelson to join us with a big smile, and rightfully so. You can you hear me all right? Yep. I'll give you this. Okay. Hold that as close to your mouth as possible and tell me what just happened. <laughs> you know, that was a really big win. Um, the first half, you know, we weren't hitting shots, but we came out the second half. We had many goals to meet, and we met them. And I mean, we won the game, but that's not the end of the season. We still have a lot of game, a lot of season left. So you do have a lot of season left, but you've got to acknowledge this one for what it's worth. And you did out there on the court afterwards. It doesn't clinch a conference regular season title, but it draws you to within an eyelash with three games left. What does I mean? What does it feel like? What did it feel like when Cola hit that shot? You know, that was a big shot. Um, I don't know. It was. It just gave you chills. Uh, I mean. They played a great game too, but we came out and we finished it in the second half. So, You personally, all over the court tonight, and I continue to say it, and I say it all the time, you took charges tonight, you gather rebounds, you hit the deck, uh, you scored 12 points, which was second, uh, only behind Diani. Uh, talk about your performance. I mean, motivation at the highest level. Yeah, sometimes, you know, shots don't fall, but you can do a lot of other things to um, contribute to the team. I mean, getting all those 50-50 balls, getting the rebounds, just if shots don't fall, maybe get a stop on the defensive end. Um, this might shock you, but the stat was, maybe you were aware of it at halftime, you guys were 5 of 25 shooting. Yep. <laughs> it didn't feel very good that first half. No, and what was the difference? Because in the second, I mean, you played great defense all night as the team. Mm -hmm. and we're joined by Courtney Nelson here. Great defense as a team. You held them to six points in the third quarter, and I believe just 10 in the fourth. But offensively, what, what, what switch did you flick to, to make a difference? Um, at halftime, we talked about um, Coach Alicia. She talked about preparation equals confidence, and I think that was a big thing. Just knowing our shots are going to go in in that second half, and that's what sparked us. I mean, we were able to find the open um, teammates, you know, and they were knocking down shots, and it takes a, a whole team effort to win that game. It does. Um, you're still shaking a little bit, yeah. right, rightfully <laughs> so, which is fantastic. <clears throat> Um, Deani Boyce hit 11 of 12 free throws tonight. You guys win by two. And that's off a tough night for Deani in her last outing. Talk about the difference for her at the free throw line. I mean, think about that for a moment. 11 of 12 free throw shooting, and I know it takes a team effort, but that was a giant part of it too. Yes, free throws. I mean, Kev talks about how important free throws are. I mean, we practice them every practice, you know, and it's important down the stretch in the game. Like, maybe she... We didn't get those shots to fall, but she was able to make your free throws, and that's a game changer for us. No doubt about it. Well, congratulations. You've got one left at home. Senior afternoon, we'll call it, on Saturday. Uh, bring the emotion with you and the energy as well, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Courtney Nelson, thank you for taking a minute to join us. And again, if you are just joining us, the Yellow Jackets trailed by 13 points midway through the third quarter and rallied to beat the team they needed to beat desperately to win a regular season conference championship we're going to hear from head coach kevin wooden here shortly he's visiting right now on another interview so we'll catch him on the back end of that but again though as we take a look at some of the stats tonight one of the biggest was defensively how the yellow jackets forced 22 turnovers 22 turnovers they only committed 12 um Multiple lead changes, but the Yellow Jackets' biggest lead was three points. Three points, that's it, and on multiple occasions. And they didn't take the lead, they didn't regain it until late. Their first lead was at four to three. So Western Washington really did a heck of a job tonight, the majority of this game. And as they walk out of here tonight, they'll be thinking about this one for a while. Great likelihood these two will meet again in the GNAC tournament in postseason play, which will be played in Washington. That'll be played in Ellensburg. But this not only a giant win for the Yellow Jackets in terms of conference standings and the opportunity now to slam the door on a conference championship, 
perhaps on Saturday. But even bigger because the chance still exists for MSUB to, I believe, host its first ever women's basketball regional tournament. That's typically played in California. The committee typically uh, awards that to California teams out there. I'll tell you what, this GNAC, the top half of it, is as tough as any conference in the country. These two teams tonight showing that. But right now, Azusa Pacific is the number one ranked team in the region. Uh, regional rankings recently just out, and they only have, I think, three of them throughout the season. Uh, one now, one at the end of the regular season, and then one at the end of the conference tournament, I believe. But right now, Azusa Pacific out in California controls that at the moment and would host a regional, presuming they get that far and win their own conference tournament. Otherwise, a very good shot if the Yellow Jacket women punch out to host a regional. Now, still ahead for the Yellow Jackets as we wait on Kevin Wooden. Again, he's in the midst of an interview right now. He'll join us here shortly, but still ahead for the Yellow Jackets. They'll host Simon Fraser here Saturday afternoon in a matinee, 2 o'clock tip-off. And then they close the regular season in Alaska a week from tonight, then a week from Saturday with road games at Fairbanks, and then the big one at Anchorage next Saturday at a 515. Anchorage is a team that swept Western Washington this season. You just saw how good Western Washington is physical, size, defensively. But Alaska Anchorage swept Western Washington. So as we sit tight here for a moment, awaiting Kevin Wooden, then the Great Northwest Athletic Conference Championship Tournament continues shortly after that. March 2nd is the Yellow Jackets closing game at, at Anchorage. Then they'll fly back and start uh, tournament play Thursday, March 7th. So two weeks from tonight. Two weeks from tonight, that tournament will start. Yellow Jackets will likely have an opening round by. They'll definitely have an opening round by at this point. But again, that's in Ellensburg, Washington. Back to this win. The Yellow Jackets. Yes, we want you. Come on over, coach. There you go. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll let you put the headset on so you can hear. Can you hear me without the headset? All right, then. I just, oh. There you go. Well, head coach Kevin Wooden, what just happened? Uh, it was just a great uh, basketball game. Tale of two halves. Uh, uh, defensively, they were awesome in the first half. Uh, we struggled with scoring. I thought we missed some shots maybe we usually make. But uh, the score at the end of the game was just so low scoring to see two teams just battling and both teams to, to keep their opponents under 50. Uh, just tremendous defense by both teams. Uh, um, and it was, it was a great game. Uh, I'm fortunate to... Uh, coach my players they didn't they continued to believe at halftime uh, we've been down double figures in this gym this year before and come back so just had to try to do it again I think the third quarter was key to get back into the game and then we we just wanted it to be close at the end if we could keep it close maybe with the crowd would get into it and we'd get some stops but uh, Alicia and Janiel did a great job with the defensive scheme and uh, um, our defense was solid in the second half and and we just kept battling and finally made some shots. Yes, you did. And I'll tell you what, in a classy move, as always, you gave great credit to their defense. Um, you guys played outstanding defense in the first half as well. You held them to 30 points, but you were 5 of 25 shooting. So you found that offensive rhythm in the second half. And you held them to six points in the third quarter. But again, talk me through that offensive rhythm that you finally got into because that's tough inside. I mean, it, Cola was not feeling her best. She'd been, she'd been sick, so take me through the second half offense. You know, I thought we became more aggressive. Uh, Deani attacked the basket early in the game, and she got back into that in the third quarter, got to the foul line um, a few times. Uh, you know, with that 90% percentage, that's an important way for us to score. I thought Courtney um, finished around the basket. Uh, she's just so competitive, works so hard. Um, then, you know, we, we get, did a better job on the defensive end, which got us a few transition baskets, too. Um, you know, if we can get out and run, it, maybe you don't get a layup, but you, you can circle. It's harder for the defense to set. And we got, I thought we got some uh, two or three high-low actions and just passed the ball much better in the second half. And, you know, we didn't go on any uh, offensive explosion by any means, uh, but uh, we uh, ended up uh, two ahead. And the last play, we're just – Courtney's just going to get to the basket, see what would happen. Um, 
and we got we just hit the offensive glass hard and then Cola just happy for her uh, to get an opportunity to make a shot like that near the end of a game um, you know that's just something that she can always remember she's doing a great job like I said she wasn't feeling great but she gave me everything she had uh, just wonderful uh, wonderful uh, athlete joined by women's head coach Kevin Wood with the Yellow Jackets here and you've been at it now you're in your 20th season in charge here you've had some big wins You've had some big wins on the road. You've had some big tournament wins. You've been to the Elite Eight multiple times. Where does, where does this finish rank? Well, first of all, I've only been to the Elite Eight once. So oh, I stand I, I corrected. Appreciate, appreciate that. Uh, Frank got I sure yeah, like, my, I sure like to go again sometime. <laughs> my, but, foreshadowing. Uh, it was um, foreshadowing. I don't know. I've, done, I've coached so many that I've had some great wins, like you said, tough losses. Uh, we're just going to uh, – we're just happy. Uh, you know, the magnitude of this game – being uh, two teams at the top I don't know that we've had a game in our gym so late in the season with two teams that are so closely um, cont- you know talented wise and two just good programs and uh, it was it was a lot of fun I'm I'm, I'm not, wouldn't be surprised if we play them again soon but uh, we just now have to go back to work uh, and be ready for Simon uh, on on Saturday let me ask you a specific question about the final 1.7 you had two team fouls to give uh, was there thought in your huddle, and there were a couple of timeouts there, to give one or both of those fouls as soon as they caught the ball? There was, but it would be more, we thought of it more with there had been four, three or four or five seconds left. Just at 1.7, you're, you're catching the ball and getting ready to shoot. So I just... We didn't think that uh, we could risk that, okay? Um, we took Cola out, but then we thought that maybe they would try to lob to um, uh, Brooke. So we just tried to, to play each player the best we could, uh, get some pressure there. Um, we did talk about that, but that wasn't the plan unless they dribbled away from the basket, which with 1.7, I just didn't think that would happen. Final question, just break down in your words. What happens now with three games left? Nothing mathematically clinched tonight, but you're now within an eyelash. Well, you, you haven't done I, it. We haven't. Our goal is to uh, win the GNAC championship. It's 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 something we haven't done since uh, 2018, um, and it's there. But you can't uh, think about it. You have to just play the possessions in each game at a time. Uh, you know, so uh, it'll be a. Uh, good challenge for us to be ready for Saturday, but we, we uh, are going to honor four great seniors. Uh, Cola, first year here uh, in her final year. Then Natalie's been here with us for three years. And then Danny and Shayla are five-year seniors. So that's uh, we want to send them out the right way with a win, but uh, we have we got to be ready to play because Simon uh, is a good team. Excellent. Well, we'll let you get out of here on that note. Your final tonight, 48-46. Congratulations, head coach Kevin Wooden. Good luck on Saturday. We'll see you then. Thanks, Scott. And good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. You got to.